in some. The U.S. government had the information scattered throughout the system to potentially uncover this plot and disrupt the attack. Rather than a failure to collect or share intelligence, this was a failure to connect and understand the intelligence that we already had. Welcome back to Harbor. Richard Benveniste has served on the commission, the 9-11 commission that investigated that horror in America, and we're lucky to have him tonight. You saw the president, your review. I thought the president did exactly what he should be doing. He's taken charge. He's accepted responsibility. The buck stopped there. He acknowledged that. And I think uh, there will be a very careful review. Um, there are things that need to be done quite clearly. Somebody at NCTC, the group that was stood up in order to fix the problems of 9-11 in terms of assimilating information, stitching it together, cobbling it together in order to provide us with the kind of information we need to act proactively um, did not happen. What's Somebody it failed. like in that room in Washington where people get the information from Lagos, Nigeria about a father coming in the door and saying, my son's dangerous. They get information from uh, Yemen. There's a Nigerian on the loose. We've got to look out for him. What's it like in that room with people with eye shades on, rolled up sleeves? What, what is, goes on in that room? I think at the end of the day, you're going to find that somebody who had responsibility for this information was overwhelmed with other things to do. And I think the lesson out of that is going to be to allocate more resources, human, technological. You need to have the kind of uh, search engine capability that is capable of uh, matching names together. We, we know now that uh, uh, Customs and uh, Border Protection were able, while the flight was in the air, uh, to send a message saying that Abu Muttalib needed to be interviewed upon landing, okay? So the information was there. It should have been available in Amsterdam if the same information caused them to say, look, you need to screen this guy before he gets uh, loose in America. So that information was there. We need to get some answers as to why it wasn't acted upon at an earlier stage. The 9-11 Commission recognized this, said we need to screen people, particularly people who are transiting. Uh, from some third world country into Western Europe to an airport. They need to be screened. We need to use that information. Let me blow your socks off. This just in, as we say in the journalism world, a senior, this is from a hot note at NBC here, a senior State Department official says that a simple misspelling of the name Umar Farouk Abdul Matalab name, his name, was the reason no one realized the would-be bomber had a visa to enter the U.S. What's your reaction to that? A spelling error by one letter in a very long name. By a vowel. And listen, uh, you were saying as we came in here, just Google, Google. it, because they'll correct for spelling. I mean, I mean, we need to improve, obviously, the technology to match these names. There are going to be many misspellings. Uh, if I Google something and I get it wrong, uh, it comes up, do you mean such and such? Well, he was listed as a P3B, a possible terrorist, and yet when he applied for his visa and got one to come to the States, he somehow or somebody at the, at the consular office misspelled his name by one letter, and because of that, he got through the screen. Well, he had a pre-existing visa. The question was, why wasn't it revoked? Why wasn't he subjected to secondary screening, at least, on the basis of the information that was available? And that's where we okay. fell down. Pretend right now, it's not hard for you to do it, you've done it. You're a chairman of a committee. Next couple of weeks, these guys are going to be coming before the committees. The CIA people, the uh, National Intelligence head, Dennis Blair, they're all going to be facing the music up there, the lions, if you will. What would you hit them with? Well, the same questions. I'm what would you hit Panetta tonight? with, head of CIA? Uh, why wasn't there more intramural sharing uh, at the CIA? Did you do everything that you could? Do you need more help? Do you have the assets needed in Yemen um, to confront what we now see as a very serious um, uh, spread of the central uh, al-Qaeda uh, uh, message to this other country, which has now got a very effective uh, recruiter working for it, Al Laki. He is the Pied Piper of um, these individuals. When you take a look at this young man and you look at what his reactions were, you almost you, you almost begin to think uh, about brainwashing, uh, programming an individual who is uh, over the internet. 
Well, that's the beginning of it. Yeah. It's the beginning they're, of it. They're seducing and recruiting. Let me ask you this. Stop looking in the rearview mirror. We've been doing that tonight. Look into the wind, up, right. up through the windshield of the car. Looking ahead right now, Alaki's still over there in Yemen. Right. Alaki got you recruited, Nadal Hassan and this young guy. He's out there recruiting, and he's sending people out there to act. Nobody asked about that today. I'm asking you. What, well, would you, what would we get out of the CIA on that one? Well, we've known about al for quite some time. In fact, he was specifically identified in the 9-11 Commission report because he had contact in both San Diego and uh, Virginia uh, with two of the 9-11 yeah. hijackers. So we knew who he was. Uh, That's we two have, and two now. That's but we have been trying to kill this guy in Yemen. Uh, and in fact, the uh, recent reports okay. thought that they had actually gotten. Richard Benvenista, an expert tonight. Great to have you tonight on this 